Hi everyone, MJ here. Yeah, I'm uh, joining the uh, the bandwagon. That is the use of uh, StreamYard. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Appreciate you joining. We're um, doing a talk show tonight exclusively on Periscope. And if you look down here in the bottom, there's actually a URL. Okay, and if you copy this, make a screenshot or whatever, and you go to <clears throat> that URL on your web browser, even if you are using a mobile, uh, you can join us and I can put you on the air. So this is great. So this is uh, just another way that we can do a nice little talk show here. <clears throat> and I want to thank Casper and John Ho and others who have uh, used this platform and yeah. I'm actually considering uh, upgrading my account to allow me to do like the RTMP to restream or to other, uh, you know, simulcasting, kind of like Prism does, you know, to the different uh, platforms. It's kind of nice. The only thing I'm going to miss is not having the comments on the screen. But, for example, there is a sample comment over here on, on uh, the user interface. And any comment that you see, you can um, click and, and it'll be visible. Watch, I'll, I'll type please. Whoops, I gotta spell it right. Join. And if I go like this, then you probably will see it in Periscope. Yep, there you go. Yep, and if I do this, it'll show the comment. So I can, uh, you know, show some of the uh, the comments as we go along so please feel free to join van how you doing nice to see you on periscope and go ahead and feel free to uh, you know click on the well you can't click on this but uh, feel free to uh, join us if you'd like to be on the air <laughs> now the interesting thing is um, all these live streaming audio codecs are stereo and I'm using um, you know my nice tube microphone and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan the audio to the left and I'm gonna see what happens and we should hear only in the left now but the funny thing is is in the recording I did uh, recording test I did earlier I didn't notice that now I'm panning it over to my right see to the right if you got your earbuds on you may be able to hear that but actually, um, I don't know if it broadcasts in stereo or not. So that's the thing. Now tonight, you know, we have kind of been avoiding everything that's going on. And you know what that is. It's the troubles all over the world. I need to go here. I need to adjust the threshold on this a little bit lower. I have my noise gate on because um, I am getting a little bit of computer hash noise. I have so many things connected. I've got my 32 channel um, digital console and my monitor controller over here all connected to USB to the PC. PC is running. It's just, it's, I have, I've been spending the last several hours uh, basically just trying to, um, You know, just just have um, less noise. I've been trying to, to get rid of uh, troubleshooting the noise and making things uh, quieter, but it's definitely difficult. So, anyway, one of the things you can do is you can definitely uh, close programs and keep processing down if you can. So, that's a good idea. At least we're not using, like, OBS, which takes a tremendous amount of processing power to do while you're say you're running things like uh, Reaper and so forth. Dave, how are you? Welcome on Periscope. We are um, run StreamYard. How you doing? And what I'm doing is I'm slowly showing the uh, comments so people can see them. No, I'm not on YouTube. 
And the reason I'm not on YouTube is because uh, StreamYard does not simulcast like Prism does. And you have to upgrade your account. And I haven't done that yet because I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. I don't know what, I'm, you know what the future is. So, yeah. Um, it's not that bad. If you pay by the year, it's 20 bucks a month and you can do a custom RTMP, which means you can uh, you know, stream to any RTMP, which means uh, like... Um, stream uh, like a restream you know so you can hit all the all the places that you want um it does natively connect to a couple of different platforms and for 20 bucks a month you get to go to two platforms so that would be cool but what i can do is i can download this later and i can upload it to youtube which is good so that's one of the reasons that i'm putting the comments on so Now, the trouble in the world that everybody's talking about, we can't avoid it. The trouble in the world is just, uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, what I'm doing is you can um, kind of like Prism where you can, um, uh, you know, you can pin a comment. So, um, yeah. Um, as far as the Periscope experience uh, is, it's, it's no different. But uh, what I'm doing is each comment that comes in, I'm clicking on it because I want it to go on the screen because I can't get comment burn. And I know, Dave, I know you've been avoiding this, and I don't blame you a bit. I wish I could. But the thing that's really disheartening was um, several hours ago, I was preparing for the show. Uh, technically, I wasn't you know, working on any content. Well, listen, that guy's so loud, but I don't have the window sealed. Um, I was looking at this earlier, and it was 1.498 or something about two hours ago, and I wondered how long it would take before it would go all the way to one and a half million. Dean, welcome on Periscope. <laughs> this is funny. Um, you, the truth is, Dave, MJ's Cafe and Bar is in Manila, Manila, Philippines. I took this picture in 2011 when I was there. Um, my, my Filipino friends, want, they said, I want to take you someplace that's really cool. And they didn't tell me, <laughs> they didn't tell me where it was. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I got a cough switch. Watch this. I do whatever I want and turn it up when I forgot. So, yes, there is. There really is a place. Yep. And it's in Manila. And Dean is saying hi to everybody. How's it going, Dean? Nice to have you with us. Listen, feel free. Just look at the, the URL here. That's a, that's a real URL. And it's not, uh, yeah, it's the real thing. If you go to, if you go to this right there, I don't know if that's any easier to see. The problem is you can't, you know, copy and paste it would be nice if uh, somehow or another during a stream uh, you know a comment could actually be um, you know clicked so but we do have we do have other options here too and let me see I think I can do this while uh, yeah um, see I've got other backgrounds too and, you know, this is just like old times right here. So it's me and Casper hanging out. So sound like a telegraph. You did, you did what? Well, um, the thing is, right, is I'm using headphones and uh, the system says if you're using a high quality mic, yeah, and earphones that you don't need to use the audio processing. So I have disable the audio processing because it's just you know it's too much um, because it's a uh, when you're using your phone and of course you know with a mobile device I mean come on you know the speakers down here right and you know the microphones right next to it there has to be some kind of an anti um, you know what am I trying to say uh, there has to be um, echo reduction you are in backstage. 
backstage where you like at a Def Leppard concert or something. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in the news and you know that I don't get political, but, uh, you know, I, I just want to say that the general director of the world health organization, I mean, he needs to stop and he needs to step down before he actually loses all dignity. I mean, he still has a shred of dignity left. So, all right, Dean, I presume that you're going to join us on audio only because I don't see your camera. And so let's go ahead and bring Dean into the broadcast. Hi, Dean, you're on late night with MJ Klein. And how are you doing? We're going to try that again. You're on. Go ahead. It says I, I can mute your mic, but I don't have your mic muted. Where is um, is your mic muted? Yeah, uh, yeah. I have complete. I have complete gain over the. Uh, over the mic, I'm using the uh, the X32, and so I do have the mic gain up, and I'm trying to avoid like where moving around just doesn't you know make so such such a huge difference. Um, and I am typing and doing other things that if I wasn't, it would be okay. But Dean, uh, let's I do this. I can't hear um, why? I don't know why. Yeah, I'm gonna. Dean, I'm going to kick you out, and I'm going to put you back in in just a second. Okay. Well, there you go. I think I think that's interesting. How you know Casper just like move down the bench. <laughs> okay, so let's do this again. We're going to add you to the stream, and Casper move down the bench. Okay. Want some bootsy. Oh, I heard that. You want some bootsy? Okay. I love those. Now the I love those. Go ahead. Is Dave still there? Dave's, Dave's here, yep. Yep. If he's here, I just did a little explanation about the about the mic. Now, about these troubles that we have. Dave is still here, he says. So no video. No, you can turn your video on if you want to. But, uh, you know, where everybody's in lockdown, I mean, this is, this is like, you know, the underwear show. Everybody's on, you know, in their underwear. I'm not, but... Yeah, I'm just, you know, we've been talking about how there's going to be a a big baby boom. You know, there's going to be a COVID-19 baby boom. And just like the, uh, the post-war. But uh, earlier today, I mean, this was just, uh, it was at 1.4, like 1.48 or something million. And it's going up. And I don't want to be morbid but you know the united states has 432,000 this is confirmed of course you know we know that they can't be 100 percent accurate i mean and it's not that 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 they're being you know purposefully misleading it's just that you you just can't know right and so um it's it's gonna go it's i told my wife i said uh you know i think in a matter of 10 days i think it's going to be over a million because it just, you know, because what it is, I mean, look, look at the curve, okay? If you look down, if you look down the right-hand corner, the curve is just crazy, so. Yep. Well, That's true. B days, how Trump are you? Did. That's right. Trump did. Trump made everybody a red Trump state. Trump made everybody a red state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I don't know if Trump did it. See, the thing is, is like this is one of those things that I know that people who hate Trump are going like, I can't blame this on him because you know he didn't do it. But no, no. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this and see if it has actually gone up in numbers because it is just, I mean, it is out of control. Yep. 
Dean, I don't know what's going on. You've got a, um, you know, uh, we've got some kind of connect going, connectivity problems. I don't know if your internet to, is uh, going back to, is low or what. But I'm going, I'm back, going back to. Bye. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining, and I guess he split. So that would be it. that would be it. So okay. There you go. So. And I am uh, highlighting these comments, you know, much I'm doing it on, um, you know, I'm doing it on the, uh, on the fly here because um, I'm going to upload this to YouTube later. Now we don't have too many views and uh, it's because I'm not like eating deep fried food and all that stuff, but. Now, one cool one cool thing is, you know, we've got this console, and we can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, I just wanted to see if, uh, if uh, you know, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, what he's saying is, is that the, um, he's reading this back here. See, I'm sorry, this way. He's reading this right here. See this? Let me show this. I'm going to show this. See that that's what this is. That's what he said. And and uh how tzu means it that, that it's good to eat. This is what the um the Vietnamese call uh I mean that's ban mi, but but that that's how you would say it in Chinese. It means uh French bread is all it says is really all it means. So yeah, back in Periscope. Okay, very good. Very good. And uh Dean says he's back in Periscope. That's excellent. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, well. <sighs> so there you go. And uh, so Dave said he's got to be get better at gathering his content. And uh, sorry, I put these a little bit out of uh, order. But hey, you know, I just... Dave, I think your content is great. And um, I think that you are the world's greatest live streamer. That's what I think. So, anyway. What does she want? I want the dong xia. So there you go. Yeah. Yes, he is. And we can uh, even, you know, we can put it in like the uh, the big voice of. Well, let's do this. Oh, well, hang on. Actually, I gotta check my effects and make sure that they're uh, that they're set up right. I didn't even look at this. Okay, so I have this on a on the plate. It's not going in the plate. Oh, that's interesting. What happened? Let me check my returns. Are my returns in here? Yeah. I gotta check my. Oh. My, yeah. My effects returns were all turned off. Oh, here you go. This is what I want to put. So, yeah, I agree. You know, the Greenland, North Korea, Myanmar, nobody, nobody has uh, content like Dave. It's just crazy. So there you go. She <laughs> says my Chinese is good. My Chinese is terrible. What uh, the So there you go. So uh, yeah, that's the problem. See, we can't um, we can't really travel right now you know it's just it's the problem is it just goes against our nature you know uh, we want to get out we want to do stuff you know and uh where's that where's that ban button ban you for that <laughs> but here we go Mm. There was an old ad. What was it that? What was it? 
that they did. It was a uh, oh, I know what it was. See, I'm going way back, you know, because I'm an old guy. We had uh, had uh, the the Drano commercials, you know, and the the plumber was talking about Drano's and stuff. Drano, you know, for cleaning drains, and the woman said, you know, uh, that the housewife, you know, was she was you know, was it going to hurt the pipes? Would Drano hurt your pipes? No. So, he does have a lot of content. Bhutan, let me tell you, I have a little bit of a ham radio history. Not that I, that I mean, I've, I tried to work Bhutan a lot. And there's a famous um, ham radio operator. Gosh, I can't think of his name now. Jim, I think. He's from Norfolk Island in Australia. And he even went to Bhutan and he wrote an article for uh, QST magazine. And it was really, really cool. Um, you had to fly in over the mountains and do like a boom, you know, so one of those things. So, but it's really cool, and I I would love to go there and I'd love to operate. Um, I have decided that I think one of the things that I want to do is try to get Taiwan to recognize uh, United States radio licenses. I have three United States. Radio licenses, actually, I have um, the third class radio telephone operator's license, which is just a, what we call a serial box license. It only has one question. Do you have $35? Um, it's, it, you just pay it. But what it is, is if you want to operate a broadcast station, you need to have that. I also have the GROL, the general radio operator's license, which replaced what used to be called the first phone. That's the first class radio telephone operators license and I also have the amateur um, extra license and that's uh, that's pretty cool so um, the amateur extra license uh, is the highest ham, ham radio license class that they have um, in the United States and it's fun it's really cool now I like this background it's kinda like a vaulted country home you know and that's cool so I think these comments look really good, and uh, you know, one of the, the suggestions, as you guys know, I have a tendency to get myself involved with these different uh, uh, developers, you know, like with um, with like uh, um, you know Jake at, at Prism and stuff, and ask him to do things. I might ask these guys so they can implement. No, nope, you don't. It's all been, uh, it's all gone. But I had to learn Morse code at 20 words a minute in order for me to uh, uh, pass my... Um, it's 5 words a minute for the novice, then for the general it's 13, it used to be, and then it would be... Uh, and then it would be um, uh, 20 for the extra, so... Well, you know, I, um, I used to spend uh, a fair amount of time hunting for this stuff. I mean, that's how I found Brocast. And I got, you know, I got pretty close to the Brocast guys. They actually um, shared, you know, like business information with me and things. They, they invited me to their business meeting in Dubai and stuff, but then they ended up folding up because their um, investor pulled out, you know, but uh, which I understand. But anyway, so um, with Jake, I asked him, yeah, me too. Me too. That was a fun... That was a fun, fun platform, uh, you know, with the uh, the voice comments and so forth. And well, we can do that now. Brocast was just starting to get into bringing other people's, you know, um, um, well, you know, their video and their audio into the broadcast. And they never quite got it um, perfected. Never quite got it perfected. But, hey. You know, that just that's just the way it is. But I think it would be nice if we could have all of these comments individually high, highlighted, say, you know, if you just put a time frame on it, like, uh, you know, one or two seconds, I think it makes a big difference. And uh, what do you think of this background? I like this background, except I think this background, I think this background should have a little, a little more, a little more echo and maybe some, uh, maybe a couple like a like some delay like that yeah i think that kind of 
suits the uh, the background. <laughs> I'm being ridiculous. I'm having too much fun. Now, there's something interesting about this too, Mike. The front of it has a little window. And of course, the, the whole body is die-cast aluminum. I mean, you wouldn't want to do it because of the capsule, but as far as the case goes, you could use it for a hammer. But um, where the window is, there's no shielding. Now watch what happens if I put my thumb or finger in front of the tube. Listen. Hear that? Pretty interesting, but you don't get that over here. Because it's... Obviously, it's metal and it's shielded. But yeah, that's what happens. One of the things that I wish the... Um, hey, oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to turn this off. This is ridiculous. Um, StreamYard comes with a couple of backgrounds like this. This is the standard background. Bricks, and this kind of looks like, if you ask me, this kind of looks like uh, coffee with Kenrod, kind of which is cool. I like Ken's, uh, Ken's brick background. And it also comes with this one, which is interesting, like you're sitting in the living room, you know, and, but you kind of don't want to look like you're in the living room, do you? I mean, I can't tell you how many serious, serious performances I've seen, like in a doorway and stuff. I just can't take it seriously, but that's just how it is with me. But, um, I think probably all around the best one is going to be MJ's Cafe. Now, if you'd like to join, please feel free. Go to StreamYard.com and then A57KJQ2VGS. And it is obviously all lowercase. And I uh, appreciate everyone joining. Um, tonight, by the way, um, depending on where you are you know, in the world, we're eight hours um, past UTC. Uh, we're eight hours plus UTC. Uh, it's nighttime here now. Um, local time is 23.10, so it's 10 minutes after 11 p.m. And um, the interesting thing is that this is a super moon. Now, tonight is is the last full moon. We had three nights of full moon. We had Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And so tomorrow's Friday. It'll start, to becoming, it'll start becoming the waning gibbous, which is still going to be pretty big. But this, um, this year, we're fortunate enough to have three super moons and this super moon is the biggest of all three and so yeah it's um it's pretty cool it's really cool and so um anyway uh let me do this because i'm yeah Want to check this out? <laughs> this is funny. What I'm doing is is I'm looking to see if there's anything that I can uh, share from the Time and Light TV site. So, right, right. And if you're in the Eastern Stand time, Standard uh, Time Zone, uh, it's 13 hours. And if you're Eastern Daylight, see the problem is 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 you guys shift in the United States, and when you shift, it uh, it becomes a problem, and so yeah, it it becomes a little bit of an issue. So uh, apparently, if I am using the share screen mode, uh, I could actually play like some past videos and things, which would be pretty 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 interesting. Um, those of you who, who are familiar with uh, Taiwan Live TV, uh, we actually have an extended version of that, and I put it on Taiwan Live dot or Taiwan Live dot TV, our uh, companion website. And I'd like to go ahead. Let me just see what it sounds like uh, coming through the desktop. We'll just see. be the uh yeah it's buffering obviously hmm 
Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to play. That's interesting. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Let's see if the regular theme song will play. Nope, it's not. Huh, now I gotta check that. <laughs> That's something else. Casper, how you doing? Nice to have you with us. How would you like to join us? Let's uh, let's find out. Casper, welcome. Hey, welcome hey. Night. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, are we, yeah, are we? Casper, is, is, I just, I just... is that you? I, I, don't, I don't see the mask. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I also, I also just, just... Oh, wait, oh, wait there's, a lot, there's a lot of big, big echo. echo. You're getting an echo? Yeah, yeah big, big echo. echo. Try to... Try to... What about that? Are you getting the echo now? Let me let me, talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <clears throat> hey, Dean. I have... No, no master. master. No, not in the studio. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, they're, me. They're, 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 I have... Uh, the audio processing disabled because we don't need it. But yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dave is saying there's an echo. There is on everything. Trying to, try to understand why there's, why there's such a big, a big echo. echo. Um, it might. You know what? I might know why. Hang on. Hang on. I might know why. <laughs> Now I can't hear anything. So let's have a look at the chat. Live, live yeah. comments. Okay. Just on Casper. Okay. You know, I know why. I'm pretty sure I know why. Because I'm using a USB interface and it's coming in and going back out. So, for example, if I do, yeah, okay. Hmm. I know how to solve that. It's going to take me a second. I have to change my... Hang on. Change my output my audio. Ah, uh, no, uh, mix, no minus. mix minus. It's more, it's it's more mix, mix double. Mix double. <laughs> yep. And this is going to be... Monitor right. Now, let, let me do this because, um, yeah, that's always the issue. Let me do this and see if I can get on the Behringer. Uh, yeah, one, two. Okay. Now, um, go ahead and say something for me and see if you got an echo. Okay. You're waiting for Dean or for David. Uh, don't hear any ex uh, echo. It sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, Dave, why don't you join us from Japan? Okay, see, what I'm doing now is I'm sending my audio to the uh, the program directly from the console. In other words, directly output, you know, the console. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm listening to you on the desktop. So what it was was the coming in on the desktop, There was prob it, it was probably about maybe 50 milliseconds or or like 30 milliseconds and it was going back out so okay good now we got that solved and i still have full control over my effects but you don't have full control over my voice huh <laughs> you want to bet there you go yeah they don't call it the they don't call it the studio for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, because it's hard to see on the, uh, you know, when you're using your mobile phone, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's this big. It's not even a postage stamp. Uh, there is actually uh, a microphone mute button on all the sources. So uh, I could turn, your, turn yours off or do whatever I want. Kick from the studio, ban from the studio, um, you know. And, and mute the mic so it's it's a good thing so 
Now, depending on how how we could, uh, um, well, depending on what happens in the future, uh, I may end up just subscribing to to the service. But well, Dean, you know what I did was because um, John John Ho and I were talking about this today, and I don't know uh, I don't know anything about iOS, but on on um, on Chrome on Android, I can just select uh, the desktop site which is what i did and it gave me full access it's just that you know with everything the way it is on the screen i mean i, I you know casper's video was this big and i had chat on the side and stuff what i've been doing casper is i've been uh, clicking on all mm -hmm. the comments you know so they'll do this and i'll show up for a second because i want them to burn to the stream i'm going to take this video later and download it. i'm going to upload it to to youtube to so, youtube yeah 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 um, let's do this because we want to talk about, you know, the big trouble that we're having in the world. And I got to tell you, this number up here that I saw earlier, uh, you know, 1,502,618, you know, as I was setting up for the show and believe me, what I did was I did do some recording to try and see if, uh, um, I had an echo and stuff, but it, it didn't, I, it, I couldn't tell. So thank you for the test. And you guys, you got to tell me if there's, you know, something weird going on. But um, er earlier I had looked at this number and it was like 1.498 or 1.48 mm -hmm. uh, or something. And just, you know, within an hour, it's it's broken 1.5 million. So, you know, basically um, I, I'd, I'd like to know, um, you know, what do you, what do you think is – is going to happen what what what's your take on i mean how bad is it going to get yeah so if you just look to those graph i think it's very important to have a look at um for example the total confirmed that means there must be a measurement and it must be like a positive outcome which means that you have the the COVID uh, um disease or the COVID uh, uh what's called the, yeah, the coronavirus disease but if you don't test, you don't get the confirmation. So I think, I don't want to say it's ridiculous, but I think you should not too much focusing on the confirmed cases. I think, which is much more important, is to focus on the hospitalized uh, cases. That's one. And second is the amount of death that can be directly co correlated to the, uh, to the people that have the coronavirus disease. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so interested about the, the com uh, confirmed cases. Because you also have confirmed and somebody have some mild symptoms and somebody have some very, very strong symptoms and they have to be hospitalized. So I think the most important thing is to focus on the hospitalization and on the, the confirmed death related to corona. Once again, it's a very practical and, <clears throat> and pragmatic approach, which I would expect from you, basically, because you are a scientist. <laughs> Most people, yeah. though, are just oh. are just freaking out, you know. Um, like we were talking about earlier today, they're, um, yeah. they're um, you know, it's like a... Oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm just typing a D. <laughs> um, like they're saying, you know, drinking is up. Duh. <laughs> That's what people do. You know, they're home and they're scared. They don't know what's going on yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, of course they're drinking more. So, but, um, you know, the input for me in particular, you know, um, looking at these numbers over here is just, um, just frightening. Like in, in, uh, right here, just, just the numbers for, you know, for the United States, they're just, it's just crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also 000. interesting to see is that from the small countries, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Belgium are pretty yeah. high, although there are not so many inhabitants in those countries, huh? Yeah, that's the other thing. That that's that, I know. Um, it just seems. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, it's. I've heard people in Taiwan, some commentators, they think this is going to go on for two years or three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly it's never going to go away. Uh, it may be a seasonal thing. Um, I mean, 
it's of course right now, uh, you know, the, it's a breeding ground for viruses, but it's also a breeding ground for conspiracy theories. I mean, Alex Jones will tell you that it's a, uh, you know, it's a biogenic <laughs> weapon designed to, you know, it's designed to kill um, white people. He says that it uh, that it he says it attacks the male sexual organs, the test the it, the uh, testicles, and it attacks females ovary so it's it's a it's a depopulation tool and mm -hmm. all kinds of crazy things you know and so oh you forgot um, the 5g yeah the 5g in combination with the COVID. <laughs> that's true and that's another I, one huh i did huh. see the overlay map i don't know if you saw that the overlay map <laughs> no no is, i didn't see that is, yeah some somebody huh. made an overlay map for the cases right and the overlay huh. map uh uh court happened to correspond with uh the um uh, the 5G, yes, yeah, so which is there you go. And Dave says that the it, the curve will go up again, maybe. Um, supposedly, well, here's the thing. Um, that's a really good question, and I think Casper may be uh, better at. Um, well, Casper, look, I mean, mm -hmm. you know more about this stuff than I do. And, uh, you know, Casper is a Ph.D. chemical engineer. He's not a medical doctor, but, I mean, he's got all the chemical background that you need to have to be a medical doctor. But, I mean, seriously, um, <laughs> you certainly got all the math that you need to be a mechanical engineer, that's for sure. But, you know, um, Dave's making a good point. Hey, Linda, how are you? Nice to have you with us. Um, he's making a good point. Uh, but the thing is, like regular flu doesn't, mm -hmm go continuously around the year it spikes during winter time because people are inside and you know there's just there's, there's just circumstances that are conducive to the spread mm -hmm. of it but then in the summertime i mean you're not going to get the flu like in a park you know playing playing baseball 100 meters away from other people so uh i i don't know i mean what what do you think is the um ultimately what do you think is the is the um I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? So, so I, I think uh, uh, if you think about the virus in general or a disease, you need to think about the, what's called the R naught, and the R naught is the uh, you could see it as an important number how uh, f uh, how you can spread a certain disease. And if the R naught is one, it means that one specific person who has the disease can spread the disease to one other person. So basically okay. it doesn't really grow. But if R naught is bigger than one and they expect that uh, from the COVID, uh, I forgot, it's, it's about 1.2 or maybe two, even really a higher number than one. It means it's more easy to spread. And that is exactly what we are seeing right now. So that means uh, that if you have the virus, I think it's about the R naught is about 2.2 actually, I remember. That means you meet really, uh, it's so easy to spread so you need to that's the reason why you need to be at home and um about the two years i think uh dave you, you might be right but the question is called, of course what we do we want to achieve yeah john so two 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 four it's really high really high number so the question is what do we want to achieve so for example the netherlands we have the issue that we don't have so many um um uh, uh, beds available and don't have so many ventilators available. So what they're doing right now is to flatten the curve to make sure that everybody can make use of the um, uh, the ventilators. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, if you just release everybody, then of course the um, uh, more people will get the disease because the R not is so high. So yeah, you will start over again and again. But we need to wait uh, till we have either one uh, an api so active pharmaceutical ingredients that can can solve the the disease okay, basically you can recover fast or secondly we need to have the vaccine um so these are the in my opinion the two most important things that people are working on at the moment and that you stay at home it's more like it's not really a big solution it's it's like uh, how to how to what's the right word for that it's yet yeah it's the only response the that they can Right. It's the only response oh. that they can do that doesn't that doesn't directly cost people money to stay home, but it, it costs the economy or anything else. So I've been saying for a long time that, you know, COVID-19 is not that bad of a disease. You're probably not going to die, but it, it'll destroy your life and it doesn't matter how your life is destroyed. I mean, I myself, as you, you probably know, 
I mean, that destroyed mm-hmm. my music career. Uh, you know, I, I had uh, big medical problems for years, and I remember one record I was doing in the 90s, man, I did some of the vocal tracks that are a year apart because I just I was too sick to do it. And it doesn't matter. Uh, any kind of a big economic problem, if you can't work, you can't make money, you're, it's, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, now the ventilators and things, you know, I'm not a medical doctor. Um, I play one on TV, but um, I've been reading some interesting things about how um, actually, you know, the ventilators um, are not the answer because the virus is actually destroying the uh, blood's ability to carry oxygen. Have you heard Mm -hmm. about that? Have you heard that? Yeah, but then you need to think about uh, the the what's called the mode of action of the of the COVID of the the, the specific virus. So this virus will basically attack uh, in your lungs because there are some specific receptors uh, that mm. can connect to the virus, and then those human cells will recognize this virus as. Uh, um, like like something something which is okay. So basically, the virus is then encapsulated in the human cell, and then once it's encapsulated, it will just basically copy the RNA. Will copy the whole machinery in order to copy the whole uh, virus, and then their body at a certain moment will recognize that it's like an outsized uh, outside species that you need to attack. And then your body will enter like an overreaction, will produce a lot of uh, like fluid, like a lot of blood, uh, sorry, not blood, a lot of water. And those cells are super important because they are the cells that regulate the, um, the oxygen um, from the oxygen from the outside world uh, to, the, to the blood. So once those cells are not available anymore, it's very, very difficult to breathe. That's one. Secondly, you have a lot of water which is also very annoying. And that's the reason why you need to have those ventilators to be able to get more air into your your lungs. What I had read was saying that, um, all those things are true. What I read uh, was saying that um, by the time you get to the ventilator, it's kind of too late. And they're suggesting hyperbaric oxygen treatment, you know, or maybe Mm -hmm. like a a CPAP machine as a, because, you know, the thing of it is, 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 Everybody says, oh, that's fine. I'll just be on a ventilator. Okay, that's somebody who's never been on one. When you're in in tubed, you know, you have to be sedated because you gag. You can't live with a tube down your throat. Um, Mm -hmm. And then you have to take analgesics because it's a tremendous amount of pain. So basically, you are going to be placed uh, in a chemically induced coma, more or less. And then, you know, um, but what you were talking about just a few minutes ago... um, it sounds to me like you're saying that the way the virus uh, attacks the body, that the killer T cells don't recognize it as an invading uh, mm-hmm. organism. Is that is that basically what it is? I'm not sure about the, the T cells and what specific parts will not or will work. But I think in general, a virus uh, is basically, how do you call it? It's like mimicking or just... Uh, uh, um, like a thief in the night, just getting to to your your cells and just pressing on the on the right buttons, and then if you press the right buttons, the door will open, and that's the door of those cells, the the, the cells inside your lungs, and then once they are inside the the, the cell, they hijack the whole uh, copying machine, and then they are copying your RNAs. It's actually a super fantastic system. Actually, if you know more about it, it's like almost like a. Um, it's just amazing. I, I don't know who designed this. Uh, it's just uh, almost like a work of God. It's just amazing. Really Satan? amazing. <laughs> well, the uh, thing is, is from what you were uh, saying, it sounds almost like what I've heard about cancer. Uh, you know, with a critical point, you know, on the oxygen reduction mm-hmm. ladder, and it gets stuck there, and the body's defenses don't recognize it as an invader, and it slowly takes over and, and, and it coerces all the other cells around it to stop working and become just like it, and pretty soon it just takes you over. But yeah, um, the the other thing you're mentioning too, I forget what they, gosh, I forget what they call it. I'm not really up on the medical terms. It It's begins with a C, the storm of, is it psych, what, whatever it is, it is it, like you said, the body's, it overreacts. And you see this in a small percentage. It's the same kind of issue with autoimmune diseases. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which, 
Right, which which some experts are saying that that COVID nineteen mimics some of the aspects of things like fibromyalgia, for example, or or mm-hmm. AS, you know, which will which will you know, and it's it's so bad because yeah, there you go. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> okay, you know that word, Casper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that it's it becomes a storm. I guess it's cytokine or cytokine. I don't know how to pronounce it, and it becomes you know a storm, and then uh, all of a sudden it overwhelms your kidneys and everything else. Tim, thanks so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to join, and anyone else like to join, please. Uh, the URL is down here, and it's um, it's in streamyard.com, and and just uh, put that. In. And I'm sorry that you can't um, simply copy and paste. But these numbers are just incredible. Um, on on the far right hand corner, though, Casper, this is um, this is encouraging news right here, because um, people have recovered. You know, over three hundred thousand. But the thing that's just so incredible is that the mm-hmm. length of time that they have to stay in the hospital. Um, when I, of course, you know, here you're in Taiwan too, and with the Taiwan um, medical system, I mean, I just the last time I got the flu, uh, I went down to the to the uh, local clinic. It's walking distance, five minutes from my house. A guy swabbed my nose. You know, he rubbed it on a petri dish or something. I presume. Anyway, 50 minutes later, he told me whether I had the flu. And uh, like my daughter went there and he said, oh, you got flu type A. I don't know what those things are, but there's a type A and a type B, apparently. Mm -hmm. And so when I got sick, I thought, okay, I got a fever and I feel like, uh, you know, body aches and stuff. And I went and he said, I don't have have flu, but I'm going to give you Tamiflu because it's a Mm -hmm. good prophylactic and it'll, you know, head things off. And I took the Tamiflu, man. And like three days later, I was like, you know, I was ready to go back to work. You know, it was amazing. But um, <sighs> is Tamiflu going to work for this? That's the thing. And, and there are so many people that are uh, just asymptomatic. Um, I and and I mean, I am I'm scared to death about about that. What I'm scared about is that. <clears throat> well, I've been staying in, inside. I've just been you know going to church, and you know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, you know, and uh, okay, and of course, you know, we got to go to the store and and stuff like that. But uh, I have been avoiding, you know, I've been social distancing and and avoiding unnecessary, you know, like going to the to the big city mall, and I've been wearing my mask and stuff. But one of the things that really um, worries me is that I'm going to be asymptomatic for a week or a couple of days and then all of a sudden my wife's got it my kids got it and that's just that's excuse me i'm burping i'm drinking i got a I got a cough switch i could but i gotta yeah there we go okay didn't hear that <laughs> but seriously um when I had the national talk show, I never drank because of this. I'll be in the middle of a sentence. And, <laughs> and, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, the asymptomatic aspect, see, that's something that we don't normally have to deal with, do we? <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say about that. We'll I go just back think on about... split screen then. <laughs> I was yeah, I, I, was, I, I, I was expecting something profound, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I just think about uh, we have still some um, some people in the chat room. Eh? We also still have uh, Dave. What about Dave? That you can just try just to be here on for just like like a like one minute or two. If you have an iOS device, you need to use Safari. If you use a have uh, if you have an Android device, you need to use Chrome. And if you use the link, the link that is here below. Uh, seems a little bit long, but if you just take some time just to copy it and just paste it, I mean, it just would be great if you, uh, you're you in bed, then just use the audio only. It would be no problem at all. Actually, I also was in bed. It just specifically for this show, I get out of bed. I thought about just switching on. Actually, I need to sleep because I need to w- wake up tomorrow very early. I just Thank thought you. MJ, MJ, MJ is it. on, so let's try it. 
Well, I know, Casper, uh, you know, <laughs> when you're doing radio and stuff, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, but when you do TV, a lot of people don't realize that uh, <laughs> that you're uh, <laughs> you're in your drawers, you know, underneath the desk. <laughs> and so don't stand up. If you, get, if yeah, you need, need to get, get a drink of water or something, you know, just <laughs> cover that camera or something. It's, so... No, that's okay, Dave. We appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, depending on how successful, you know, we are with this platform, we may or may not go ahead and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, expand and, and do the whole thing. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, it's a nice platform. I think it's a um, great way and very, very easy to use. Of course, a lot of things that can be improved. That's also what we discussed and what we yeah. saw with, uh, with the show with uh, John Ho and with JL. But I think it's uh, just a great starting product what we have right now that we just can't use already out of the box i agree i agree now what i was thinking today was i was thinking that i should ask jake at uh prism if they would be interested in maybe partnering with these guys or trying to uh implement you know a, a similar situation it's, the problem is it's a big it's a heavy server load for them though i think they might be mm -hmm. trying to avoid that you know but uh with um with Prism, um, I'm not sure how they do it. Like with this with this platform, if you multi-stream, you know, if you upgrade your mm -hmm. uh, account and you multi-stream, it's like restream. Your data stream to their server is identical, and they split it up and they handle the workload. But I think that when you're streaming from your mobile phone with mm -hmm. Prism, I think it's coming from you. I don't think that it's going to their server and splitting off so dean says uh he's taking short naps what what did he miss well um i don't know we'll just have to just have to see but the the numbers are out of control and um do, do you have uh any numbers like on what's going on in Europe and oh you know what you could do i'll tell you what would be really good is if we could get a really clear explanation i know you want to go i know it's late i appreciate you staying out it's 20 minutes until midnight here local time in mm -hmm. taiwan but uh before you go could you give us a, a really good explanation of what it means to flatten the curve everybody's always talking about you know flattening the curve and i mm -hmm. think a lot of people don't really understand what that is or how to do it so what would you say as, as a scientist how because you, you flatten the curve on a lot of things and I know a technician that if he couldn't fix uh, like a preamp board, he would take a hammer and he would flatten the frequency response of it with a hammer. But that's not what we're talking about. But um, in a lot of different disciplines, you know, you you flatten the curve. So are you? Uh, oh, looks like you're frozen. Uh oh, are we frozen? I think we're frozen. Oh no. Oh no, I think Casper's gone. Let me try to remove him from the stream. And I'll add him back to the stream. And we'll see. Well, I see his uh I see his picture, I see his icon. He's not napping. He's not napping. He's gone. He must have had, he must have had connectivity issues. All right, so for those who just joined us, this is Late Night with MJ Klein, and I'm a former national talk show host and a national recording artist and all this stuff that's just, I did not stop it. But thanks, John. You can join us. Okay, we're Casper's uh, back. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just heard about the, the question about flattening the curve. So if you yes, think about okay. flattening the curve, uh, maybe it's, it's good if you can show the, the curve uh, that... Oh, okay. You, you, yeah, exactly. So All that right. curve, you can already see it's the on the x x the x axis is the time, and on the y axis we have in this case the number of confirmed cases. So if you want to talk about flattening the curve, what it actually means is that uh, you can have the what they call the surface under the the curve, which is the total amount. Uh, the cumulative amount of, uh, in this case, patients, uh, 
it has a certain number. It's like 100%. And if you mm -hmm. talk about flattening the curve, that means that the curve uh, will be more flat. So that means the highest, um, highest point, which is the peak, is if you have the two options, uh, this curve or the flattened curve, the peak and the flattened curve is lower, but the total time of the whole curve will also be more broader. But the total surface under the um, the curve will be the same. So usually when we have, um, when we are in, uh, I remember elementary school, we have uh, two curves, the regular curve and the flattened curve. Basically what we are going to do is we use the knife and we will cut the, the graph uh, under the whole curve. And we mm -hmm. then going to weigh, just using a scale, we weigh both curves and they look completely different. But if we're going to weigh, they're exactly the same. So what flatten the curve means making sure that the peak, the highest moment, will be lower, but that will cause the whole graph to be very broad. And that is what we also talked about, that maybe it will take about two years to flatten the curve, and then it will go back to the normal situation. There's an interesting, there's an interesting uh, chart here that you might want to take a look at, too. If you've seen this one... Um, you know, these are the, uh, it, this is a coronavirus COVID-19 global cases. And mm -hmm. this is on a, on a basically a month by month. It goes on the bottom January 22nd to 26th to 30th and February 1st to the 7th, 11th. So mm -hmm. it's, it's week by week. And you'll notice on the right hand side that, um, that one major peak right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say. It, it, let me see. I'll show you this right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 4.4, 4, and it says 101.5K. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, it says 74.7K, and then 73K, uh, and then it's um, 81K and 85K. So it seems like the number of of confirmed new cases per day is actually starting to drop. And yeah, and but I, 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 as a data analyst, uh, I I do not agree uh, that kind of conclusions because if you, as a data analyst, you can you need to really think about what are we looking at because. Uh, we are looking right now at the uh, amount of uh, confirmed cases and we need to know how are they collected, how do they measure, and maybe that specific date and where we have this peak, maybe they were just uh, doing more analysis uh, or there was like the, the lady who didn't want to work on that specific Sunday went to home early and she thought about, oh, let's cover the other data late another day so it's very difficult to judge and maybe we you can just see it as an outlier and i think it's very very dangerous to make prediction based on those uh, like very 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 limited cases and again this is confirmed cases which is very very in my yeah in my knowledge very vague you need to be much more uh, focusing on thinking about what i mentioned before hospitalized cases or death directly related to corona very interesting. And I've never had anybody tell me that I was like completely wrong so nicely before. It's great. And scientifically, <laughs> I, I liked it. But, you know, but see, that's oh, why. No offense. No, yeah. of course not. That's why we need somebody who knows what they're talking about. I mean, well, I'm just a dumb guitar player, okay? If that was a musical scale, it'd be no problem. But, okay. But the, the, the thing of it is, is we do want to flatten the curve. But then again, the average person may not even be able to recognize when the curve is being flattened. And you're absolutely absolutely right because, you know, early on in the game, we had a situation where, you remember where China changed the definition? You can't do this. It's like moving the goalpost. You know, you can't move the mm -hmm. goalpost in the middle of the game. All of a sudden, oh, look, we don't have as many cases because we redefined what constitutes a case. And that mm -hmm. was a big problem. Mm -hmm. So, and, and John is saying, pull up China versus UK and, and, and you know, know the difference. He's right here, right? Yeah. But the problem is China has stopped reporting. According to them, they haven't had any new cases in like three or four weeks. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you believe so, it? So if you don't measure, if you don't confirm, 
there is no data. So the, so usually as a data analyst, we will say garbage in, garbage out. That means the garbage data in, of course, and dar- garbage data out. And, mm. and so it's super, super important that you know very well how is the data collected. And I don't know anything about the data you showed, so I cannot say if it's garbage or is it's good quality. I'm just doubting mm. all the data that are presented. Yep. So John's asking, am I saying that China's lying? Oh, no, they just made a mistake. That's all. So, yeah. Um, all I will say is is that, um, you know, China is no different than any other country in the world. It will do whatever it needs to do in its national interests. Mm-hmm. And I think that you can just leave it at that. You know, it's not any more, any more difficult than that. But, you know, this number here seemed to be, it was like it was, you know, it seemed to be like it was um, promising, but you're right. I mean, it's, it, 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 like you said, uh, it could be that uh, maybe they ran out of test kits. Who knows? Cause it's all about confirmed cases. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the problem because um, early on, like I was saying, you know, I was in, I went to Thailand on the 21st of January and we came back on the uh, 4th of um, February and all this stuff happened when we were in Thailand. And even during that time, I was saying that, um, uh, you know, I mean, they keep moving the goalposts and stuff. That's exactly right, John. Yep, it's not. It's not. Um, You're never going to know. There are countries like um, like Vietnam, you know, where John Sabo is, and they have very low numbers of cases. But it doesn't seem reasonable because that's a huge tourist uh, destination. And, and mm-hmm. like, like if you look at Patea in um, in Thailand, you know they're 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 ready to go lockdown. I was watching uh, the news tonight. They're gonna they're gonna lock down. Um, that's another tourist dest- destination. So, in some respects, it's almost good that Taiwan's kind of off the tourist radar because it could be a lot worse if we had you know thousands and thousands of, of tourists um mm-hmm. you know like like to do hit you know hitting the beaches in in thailand but uh of course everything now that's coming in is uh, all the new cases virtually are all imported mm-hmm. you know people returning and then uh you know then it'll be person to person you know from the like case number blah 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 you know is infected you know somebody else that became the next case because they're in the same family and so forth. So anyway, I'd like to invite everyone, please, to join us at the uh, URL over here in the corner. I guess it's over over here this way. Yep, there you go. We've got a backwards camera at StreamYard.com, A57KJQ2VGS. Well, how'd you like to say that for a call sign? Wow. <laughs> so, I'd like, so I'd like to thank... Doctor Caspar from coming, uh, coming on from. Uh, I guess you're you're in Taipei. Yeah, Taipei. Uh, new t- yeah. actually it's officially called it's called New Taipei City. Oh, New Taipei yeah. City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xingbei. So, yeah. Xing thanks Bay. so much for joining. I know. I know you gotta. I know you gotta hit the rack. And so we'll see you next time. And yeah, uh, you have to come. Thank down, you for you having know. me on. Oh sure, man. You have to come down and and check out. You know, MJ's Cafe Bar here in the studio. Yeah, I, and, uh, I, I, I definitely before I will leave Taiwan, I definitely will will be there. And even even if I go there to your place on a, on a taxi, it will be that ten minutes. I don't care. I'm not going to leave the country before saying hi to you. Excellent. That sounds good. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hey, and take, take care. care. And uh, have a good evening. Zai Jin, Wan An. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Welcome to Bernardo. How you doing? Nice to have you with us from Germany. Bernardo, what's going on? Um, anything that you have to report? Uh, we'd like to uh, invite everyone to join the broadcast. And down below at the bottom of the screen is, in fact, a, uh, a URL that you can use with your browser. And you can um, join. It is a talk show. And that's the whole point. So I want to thank everyone for joining. Um, just looking here at our statistics yeah okay good good um i normally brought excuse me i normally broadcast also simultaneously to youtube and either d live or um 
what's the other one? Twitch. But uh, tonight we're just uh, sticking with uh, with Periscope. And I'm going to take this broadcast and I'm going to upload it to Periscope later. So hopefully uh, it should translate well. And I've been uh, putting the comments on the screen to, you know, so it would, it would make sense. Now, of course, we've been talking about the um, these terrible numbers and unfortunately they've gone up since we have done the show I mean it's 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 gone up it was 502,000 and you know it's 503,000 so it's going up at an alarming rate and um, you know the United States has uh, 432,000 579 and if you look at the United States, it is just, I mean, compared to Canada, I mean, look at this. This is uh, really quite frightening. Yep. I know some friends of mine that were in Taiwan, and at the start of the virus, they went back to the United States thinking that it would probably be uh, safer. But um, now, right now, this is the safest place. Our national health care system has uh, protected us, and uh, we now have mask rationing, uh, and we're going to uh, increase the number of masks that we can buy at the store uh, to nine per every 10 days, so it's good. So, oh man, I'm, uh, it's Billy. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I used to live in Boston and, uh, yep. I understand that it's, it's getting rough there. Um, Connecticut. Well, you know, we can, uh, let's take a look here and see if we can go to, uh, what would that be? That would be here or here. Yeah. If we scroll down. We can probably find the numbers for Connecticut. Hopefully, I'm not going to miss them here. And let's see, you know what? I think I'm. I think I am. The other way to do it too is to just go right up here to the state. Take a look over here. Yeah, let's just do this, and we'll. Uh, because you guys are down below, down below mass. So, all right, let me see. Here you go, right in here, Connecticut. And so if we look at Hartford, just for example, you know, big city, shows they got 1,290, um, 68 deaths. Unfortunately, none have recovered. We got active 1,222. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty devastating. Thanks, John. You take care and appreciate you joining. And I'd like to have you on the show. So other places out here. Uh, oh, that's that's Rhode Island. That's out. Oh, that's over the state line. Then you've got um, Toland, 128. And this is is this over the state line? Yeah, that's in mass over the state line, but they got they got over one thousand over the state line there, and down here in New Haven, one thousand nine hundred and more, and over over in here they've got in Middlesex one hundred and seventy four, down near the coast. Oh, that's sorry, that's over the state line. Yep, and this is uh, New London is one twenty. So yeah, yeah. The problem is is you just don't you just don't know. Um, Wherever you are, you know you don't know if there's uh, if you're going to run across somebody that's infected. Now, just over the line in New York, you know there's 1,300, and a little further down, I mean, you know, a lot of people commute from New York, uh, you know, back and forth and live in Connecticut, but uh, in in Westchester, you know, there's 15,000, and right here in um, in Fairfield, Connecticut, there's over 4,000. So yeah, it's um, it's bad. You're gonna, you're gonna take off for lunch, Dean? Wow. Okay, understand. Take care. 
thanks for joining. Appreciate it. So yeah, it's um, it's not pretty. Four thousand five hundred seventy-one deaths in New York City, and I don't even want to look at the. Uh, I don't even want to look at the uh, the death statistics. It's just yeah. Anyway, so. All right. Thanks so much for joining. I really appreciate it. It's been um, a pleasure and a privilege to uh, come to you tonight and talk about this. And I want to thank Casper for coming on. Um, he has some really good insights. Of course, he's a, he's a chemical engineer and he has uh, something of a background in these kinds of things. So I really appreciate everyone joining. And uh, not sure about how we're going to approach using this uh, platform in the future, but it seems like a nice platform. And we can also use it uh, from the mobile device. It's a little bit difficult because uh, the, the video is so small, <laughs> but we can do it. But hope to see you soon. And uh, thanks so much for joining Time of Live TV. And uh, we'll have some more content for you over the weekend and maybe some updates about what's, what's going on here. You guys take care, and thank you so much for joining. This is MJ Klein, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Taiwan Live TV. Good night.